Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a smooth spin transition effect to add to your clips and projects. So before we begin this tutorial, I just want to say if you're not following me on social media, like Instagram and Twitter, then I've got a lot of good things in the works, like a whole creator store that's going to be up on my website, and presets and all that. So if you want to stay notified for when that stuff goes up real soon, then check the description for all my links. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, then make sure you subscribe. I know we're right about to cross the 100,000 subscriber mark. Thanks to you guys, and I really appreciate it. So getting into this effect, you can see that I've got two clips laid on the timeline, clip A and clip B, and I want to transition in between them with a smooth spin at this cut. So the first thing I want to do is highlight my project media bin, and then go to File, New, Adjustment Layer. This is going to give us a blank adjustment layer for us to work on so that we can click and drag it in between our cut over top of our two clips, and then any effects we apply here will affect both of the clips throughout the cut. So this is a bit too long of an adjustment layer, and I'm going to trim it down to size. So in order to get exactly on the cut, what I'll do is I'll use the up and down arrow keys, which will get us right to any cuts as long as those tracks are highlighted. So now that I'm in the middle, I'm going to key over one, two, three, four, five, about six to the left. And then you can just press Command K if you want, that'll cut it. And then you can delete that piece. Or if you want, you can go one, two, three, four, five, six over, and then grab your razor tool with C on your keyboard, and then chop it, and then press V to grab your move tool and delete the other side. So now we have a symmetrical adjustment layer that's the same length on both sides. And what I want to do is actually just make a copy of this that we're going to use for later. So one quick way to do that is just by holding Alt or Option and then clicking and dragging it to the track above. Or if you want, you can press Command C, right click or copy it. And then you would make sure you toggle track three to be selected and then deselect track one and then press Command V to paste it. But however you get your copy up there, let's begin working and building our effects onto this. So first we're going to build our effects onto the first and lower adjustment layer. So let's head over to our effects panel on the right hand side and let's search for one called Replicate. You should find it in the Stylize folder. So let's click and drag that onto the adjustment layer and just make sure you set it to three so that you have nine different squares. Now what we're gonna do, just like in the smooth zoom effects that we've been doing, is go to the mirror effect. So find that by searching for mirror, it should be in the distort folder, and then click and drag that onto the adjustment layer. So now we're basically gonna mirror out each line that connects these three and make it symmetrical so there's no harsh edges. So first let's do 90 degrees and then let's just move, this is the X and Y position. So we could see that the 90 degree angle is going straight horizontal. So let's move the Y position until it meets right at that line. Now we're gonna do the same thing three more times. So click and drag the mirror effect on. This time let's do negative 90 and We'll pull the Y position upwards until it meets that other line. And I'm using the arrow keys to get that fine precision. Now let's add another one for the vertical lines. So this one we'll do 180. And then we'll just move the X position over until we pull that line of symmetry back over to meet the first line. And then let's add our last line and just leave this one at zero degrees. It just move the X position until it comes over and meets that last line of symmetry. So at this point, if you want to pause the video and see exactly what numbers I'm using, if you're confused, that'll help you out. Just apply the four mirrors and enter in these numbers. So now that we have our tiles ready to go, what we're going to do is go onto our top adjustment layer and click it. And now let's apply some rotational effects. So on the right hand side here, let's search for an effect called transform. It should be in the distort video folder. So let's click and drag that onto the adjustment layer. And let's actually set the scale of this to 300. And what that's going to do is it's going to zoom right into the middle square so that you can no longer tell any of those replications that we made, but they're there hidden in the bottom and the right and the top. And that's going to make it so that when the video is spinning, you don't see any black portions because there's no video there. Additionally, you might notice that it's a little bit pixely and lower quality now that we've zoomed in to a third of the grid. However, this is going to be solved by the fact that everything's going to be blurry when we're spinning. So the next setting you want to do is uncheck this box that says use compositions shutter angle. 
and then turn up our own shutter angle to somewhere between 2 and 300. It goes up to 360 max. Pretty much the stronger you make this, the more things are going to blur when we set different positional transformations. So what I'll do is go to the start of the adjustment layer. I'll set a keyframe here by clicking the stopwatch icon to toggle animation and we'll leave it at zero degrees, which is default. And then we'll move all the way to the end of the adjustment layer. And then we'll just press one time, one X to mean one full rotation. Alternatively, you could just use 360 degrees. It'll be the same. Now this is a bit of a heavy effect for Premiere to preview and process. So you might want to press I on your keyboard to set an in point at the start of the clip and then go over, press O to set an out point and then you can go to sequence render in out and then you'll get a rendered preview so Premiere will take time to figure out what's going on so you can smoothly play it back. So once it's done rendering your preview so that you can play it back easier if you want you can right click and clear your in and out if it bothers you and then let's play that back and see how it looks. So you can see we've got a smooth spinning transition and the reason everything works the way it does is because as soon as it goes into the adjustment layer you don't see that things are zoomed in 300% and pixelated anymore because you get that blurring from the rotational spin starting to happen. And then as soon as it lands back, then the adjustment layer cuts off and you're not pixelated because you're back on the original clip again. However, you could see there's a few things that might need tweaking. That's a little bit basic of an effect. So what you can do is go into the adjustment layer. If you drop down the menu right here, you can adjust the velocity of things. So these are just linear keyframes, but I can right click them and make them different types of Bezier keyframes like so. And you can see the curve starts off slow and gets faster. Or you can even pull these lines to create your own type of curves. Just be careful because you can start to get into some negative effects where things start to go clockwise and then counterclockwise. Just be careful not to pull these lines in any too crazy of a direction because then you can start to create some negative effects as you see and then your video will go like clockwise and then come back counterclockwise and your spin won't be smooth anymore. Additionally, the example I showed you goes from zero to 360 degrees, which would be a clockwise spin. But if you wanted to go counterclockwise and the other way around, then you just set your second keyframe to negative 360 degrees or negative one time and it would spin backwards. Also, as a final quick tip, if you take the two clips and you right click and add a default crossfade transition in between them and just pull in that crossfade so it only lasts just one or two frames on each side, it can help blend in the spinning transition if your two clips are very different in color like these two. So once you get the keyframing and the timing of it set up just how you like so that it has a nice velocity and movement to it, you can basically just copy and paste these same two adjustment layers over any two cuts in your clips to create that spin transition. So you can highlight them and use Alt and Option to move them over, or again, you can copy paste, but just remember to have your proper tracks toggled on when you paste, and you can basically repeat this throughout your project in different ways. As far as saving it as a preset, what you could do is save this entire section here as a preset, like the replicate and mirror things we did to tile it, and you do that by right clicking on the video effects, selecting all and saving it as a preset. However, saving the keyframes as a preset, you'd have to do separately. So you'd have to save the transform effect as a preset and just make sure you set the keyframes to either scale or you could experiment with anchoring it to the in or out point. I have a full tutorial on saving presets if you're interested in that. And also I am planning on coming out with a own preset pack that I might have up for sale on a creator store that I'm working on from my website, like I said. So if you follow me on social media, at Justin OD Show on Instagram, Twitter, you'll be notified of all that stuff. And if you like this video, definitely leave a like on it. Let me know in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all new future videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.